Stephen McDaniel, a murderer who took a sinister fascination to a spine-tingling new level. Behind a facade of false concern, brazenly stepping into the limelight, giving an unforgettable TV interview about the very woman he mercilessly murdered. McDaniel and Giddings were both recent graduates of Mackin Law. They also lived next to one another. For weeks, McDaniel has been after Giddings and forming his despicable plan. On June 26, 2011, McDaniel broke into Giddings' apartment using a master key he had stolen from the apartment manager and attacked her. He then threw the pieces in a dumpster. Luckily, he was caught soon after and sentenced to life in prison. It's not uncommon for killers to want to be close to the investigation. Throughout history, there have been killers such as Robert Mowry who have called in tips for their own murders. There have been murderers that have attended and even spoke at the funerals of their own victims. In the early hours of June 26, 2011, Stephen McDaniel broke into the apartment of his neighbor and fellow Mercer University Law School graduate Lauren Giddings, then murdered her and dismembered her body. On June 29th, Giddings' family and friends reported her missing. When local news media in Mackin, Georgia heard about her disappearance, they had sent a camera crew to her apartment complex. There, on June 30th, reporters from the television station WGXA conducted an interview with McDaniel. During the interview, McDaniel posed as a concerned neighbor. He described Giddings as nice as can be and very personable. But shortly into the interview, McDaniel's behavior took a dramatic turn. After he learned from the reporter that a body had been found, his worries turned into utter panic. Body, he said visibly anxious, I think I need to sit down. Though some may have initially thought that McDaniels' reaction was mercilessly the shock of losing a friend, police named him as a person of interest in the investigation just one day later. And it was later revealed that McDaniel was indeed the one who had killed Giddings and butchered her body. Given the nature of the crime, the brutality of it, and how little contact McDaniel had with Giddings prior to the murder, many believe that had he not been caught, he would have gone to kill even more women. I know they've been doing a lot of, I think that's where they have recovered the body or whatever they recovered from there. Body? Um, had you heard, had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? Alright. I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. You know what I mean? Like, they took out a body there earlier. We don't know if it's the same person or not. So that's why we're trying to ask people if they know who lived there. Are you okay, sir? I, I think I need to sit down. Okay. Do you know if she was like, where is she from? Is she uh, from Maryland? Maryland yeah, she's from up in Maryland. Can I just put this on you so we can hear you? Is that alright? Okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah, and you can just hold on for that. Thank you. Unraveling the Enigma, Twisted Mind of Stephen McDaniel. Stephen McDaniel was born on September 9th, 1985, and grew up near Atlanta, Georgia. His early life was unremarkable, but as a young man, he was academically inclined enough to graduate from Mercer University's law school. His future victim, Lauren Giddings, was another graduate. By 2011, both the 25-year-old McDaniel and 27-year-old Giddings lived in the same apartment complex, a short distance from the school's campus. At the time, Giddings was preparing to take the bar exam and then start a promising career as a defense attorney. But tragically, while Giddings has been preparing for the bar, McDaniels has been preparing for murder. At first glance, McDaniels didn't seem like he had it in him to commit such a heinous crime. As the Mackin Telegraph reported, it didn't even seem like he was staying in town for much longer. The lease on his apartment was up in two weeks, and he reportedly planned on moving back in with his parents. You didn't take the cookie? No. What'd you do, buddy? I didn't do anything. What'd you do to Lauren? I didn't do anything. You saw Lauren last night, though? Yesterday? No. What time was it that she went out to do her laundry? I don't know. What do we need to do that we haven't done? I don't know. You don't know? So if you had this case, you wouldn't be able to solve it, is that what you're saying? Because you're not smart enough to solve it? I don't know. Or you think you're smart enough to be a detective? I don't know. From deception to confession, the notorious TV interview of Stephen McDaniel. At the very least, most murderers typically follow the news to see what the media is saying about their crimes and if their crimes are brought up in connection to the murder. However, in the case of Stephen McDaniel, the perpetrator of a gruesome murder in Mackin, Georgia, he inserted himself into the very center of the investigation when he agreed to do a TV interview with a local news outlet in which he posed as a distraught neighbor. 
In McDaniel's mind, doing an interview and speaking about his murder victim on TV was probably his way of affirming to himself that he was smarter than everyone else, that he could hide in plain sight, and dance around right under everyone's noses, and never be caught. McDaniel seemed like any other concerned local who was worried about his missing neighbor. We don't know where she is, he told the reporter behind the camera. The only thing we could think of is maybe she was out running and someone snatched her. One of her friends had a key. We went inside and tried to see that anything was amiss. She had a door jam that was sitting right by it, so there was no sign that anyone broke in. However, cleverly, McDaniels was not as smart as he thought. By the time McDaniels learned from the reporter that a body had been discovered in a nearby trash can, his demeanor completely changed. Visibly panicked, he was silent for a moment before telling the reporter that he needed to sit down. It was later revealed that only Giddings' torso had been found and the other parts of her body had been discarded elsewhere. Hubris is, of course, a large part of the psychology that leads someone to take another human life. The idea that your life is more valuable than the lives of others and the confidence to think that you can outsmart the police are both instrumental in creating murders. However, it's still difficult to think that Stephen McDaniel's ego was inflated to the point where he was willing to appear on television and fake grief over the death of his own victim. At that point, McDaniel was already considered a suspect in the case, and later that day, the police searched McDaniel's apartment, at which point he began sweating profusely and is said to have drunk at least 10 bottles of water while the police were in his apartment. McDaniel was eventually brought to the police station for questioning. During the interrogation, he did not reveal anything incriminating. However, he was acting incredibly strangely. It wasn't long after, though, that the evidence would come to light that would lead to McDaniels' arrest and conviction. The Truth Revealed Authorities would eventually uncover evidence from McDaniels' laptop that showed he'd been gathering information on Giddings and her whereabouts leading up to her death. There was also a series of videos that indicated he'd been stalking Giddings, looking into her apartment unit through a window. In the days following McDaniels' interrogation, police found the packaging for the hacksaw used to dismember Giddings' body in McDaniels' room. They also found a master key to the apartment building, which McDaniel had stolen from the building's manager, that he used to enter Giddings' apartment. The case took a turn for the worse for McDaniel when the computer evidence started coming out, and it just kept coming. McDaniels' attorney, Frank Haug, later explained to CBS News. They were continuing to find more and more evidence related to his computer and camera. The police also found a pair of Giddings' panties, as well as several blog posts on a number of internet blogs and forums about his general hatred of women, and his desire to hurt them only strengthened the case for his involvement in the horrific murder. After being held in custody for over 10 months, McDaniel finally confessed and described the ways in which he stalked, murdered, and dismembered Lauren Giddings. He admitted that he had been spying on Giddings for several weeks leading up to the murder, filming into her apartment with a video camera that he attached to a long stick. McDaniel also admitted to stealing the master key from the apartment manager and using it to enter Giddings' apartment. When she awoke to the sound of him entering, he pounced on her and strangled her to death. He then dragged her body to the bathtub and dismembered her with a hacksaw. He deposited her body in the dumpster, assuming that it would be taken to the dump before anyone would discover it. Stephen McDaniels was sentenced to life in prison at trial and is currently being held at Valdosta State Prison. His mother has expressed that she believes McDaniel is innocent and was framed. However, from the evidence available in the case, it seems pretty obvious that McDaniel is guilty of the crime for which he was convicted. It also seems clear that, if he had not been caught for the murder of Lauren Giddings, McDaniel would have gone on to kill again.